Hello everybody, this is the second Shaw Media uh, live stream, I guess you'd call it. It is a live stream. It is. Uh, yep, yeah, that's Charlie. <laughs> that. Joe, Joe, Joe is temporarily silenced. He's not oh yeah, that's it. Sorry, we've, no, yeah, he's been kicked it. out for his controversial opinions. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so you'll probably have read on our website, our social media. Maybe you listened yesterday that we yesterday. are doing a curate curated series of uh, of events, and it is called it is on the theme of time and moments in passing. So until Joe can join us, should we say what films we've been watching over the last few days, Charlie? Yeah, yeah. Um, so what have we had? We had uh, Dunkirk. Yep. Breathless. Yep. Your name. Was there another one? Back to the Future, which Back is to the Future. The yeah, one yeah, I yeah. kept forgetting when we were talking about the yeah. films. <laughs> um, um, which, which did you enjoy most, Connor? Uh, well, some of them I'd seen and some of them I hadn't. But right. Um, I really enjoyed your name. Uh, we'll we'll oh, talk. Thank you. <laughs> How long have you been waiting to make that joke? <laughs> quite long, quite long. Um, I hadn't. Uh, I didn't know what to expect with it really, because other than Studio Ghibli, I haven't watched a lot of anime films. I've watched the odd episode of different series and things, but I really enjoyed the film a lot. Uh, what about you? What was the one you enjoyed the most? Uh, probably Back to the Future. I don't, I don't, like I've not seen that before, so like it's yeah. classic, and like I've just not seen it, but. Had you seen any of it before, or is this the first time you've seen any of it? Like, no, yeah, not seen any of it. Yeah, so that's, yeah. that's the first time. So it's, I, I hadn't seen it until fairly recently either, actually. And it's just passed me by somehow. I can't wait to watch, like, the second or third one. Yeah. I mean, pe- some people like the second one more, and I think the third one still is, like, pretty good, apparently. It doesn't I do, have... like, the Godfather and after... <laughs> Pete off after the... <laughs> yeah, there's a new cut coming out. Oh, yeah, there is, actually, yeah. I'm um, pretty buzzing to be fair. I heard Joe for a split second. Are you back with us, Joe? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Perfect. Hi. Sorry about that, guys. Just a bit of technical difficulties <laughs> at my end. Got the band back together. Just did the old um, take out the uh, audio jack and uh, and put it back in again. Of course, I'm I'm the one streaming it, so I couldn't reboot Discord. Otherwise, the stream would have lost everyone. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, thanks thanks for having my back there. That's all right. It was a little bit terrifying, but I, I <laughs> we've all got a script, so it's all right. No, thanks. Uh, thanks for introducing the podcast, there, Connor. Uh, as Connor says, you know, we're we're show, we're a brand new community with a passion for film, and uh, every day leading up to Christmas, we've been picking a film for you guys at home to watch, and every week we're live on Twitch to talk about them. So, yeah, uh, as you said, what we're going to be talking about: Dunkirk, Back to the Future, Breathless, uh, and Your Name. That was our film of the yeah. day. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think we actually had something fun planned for today, which was um, not well, normal. It's not usually fun normally. Yeah, no. <laughs> today is the, the dedicated fun day. Yeah, the this is it. the only fun yeah. day you're gonna get. Well, it's a weekend. I don't have work today, and um, might as well have a bit. Yeah. Um, but obviously, our, the theme of our festival uh, this Christmas is uh, time and moments of passing, and we we had a. Whilst getting ready for this podcast today, we, we talked a lot about montages yesterday, which I quite enjoyed as a yeah, good conversation. Yeah. But then Chaz and I started to get a little bit heated. We started debating over montages and we thought, you know, this is gold. So let's put it in the podcast. <laughs> so um, we, uh, so I thought I would be uh, the referee <laughs> for, uh, <laughs> for you guys battling it out. And uh, I, 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 I be, yeah, I want to hear your hot takes. I believe that you're <laughs> going to give, you're each going to give me an example of a, a film with a prominent montage and you've got to state your case. You've got to describe what it is first and you're going to state your case of why it is the better one. And I'm going to, I'm going to kind of judge it. Is that what how, we're going to do? How much do I have to bribe you with to, to, to me to win? <laughs> What's your, what's your um, price? You maybe shouldn't have said that on the podcast. Chaz, if you want to bribe someone, you've got to do it privately in our, in our uh, Discord <laughs> staff chat. If you, send me, if you send me half a Bitcoin, you can win every single half one. Half a Bitcoin. Wow. <laughs> half a Bitcoin. That's currently, what, $7,000 or something like that? Yeah. What well, about Nolan Corp? Chal- I'll send you some Nolan Corp. <laughs> <laughs> Invest in Nolan Corn now. It's new yeah. up and coming uh, <laughs> cryptocurrency. Excellent. I mean, uh, sh- who wants to go first? We didn't decide who's going to go first. 
I go first. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, so I've got to. So I've got to describe the montage without giving away what the film is. Is that oh, what you? Is that I mean, what you want? I, I was just going to say state the film and then tell me which montage you're talking about in the film because it might be a little bit too cryptic. Otherwise, I think. Ah, okay. All right. Well, no, that's fine. That's good. Well, I thought about the social network. Uh, obviously, Which David. One? Um, <laughs> good one. <laughs> um, the I think it was 2010. David Fincher yeah. biopic yeah. about obviously how Mark Zuckerberg and his co invented Facebook, and written by Aaron Sorkin, who is he's 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 more of a musician, I would say, than than a writer. He, in terms of the fact that you know his dialogue is treated like music. Um, right. Really pretentious the way he talks about his screenplays, but <laughs> I think I think in the social network that's really true. Yeah, um, because he he even admitted that he thinks of dialogue as music. You know, snappy, repetitive, clever. There's peaks and troughs, uh, and it got me thinking about how the whole of the social network, the whole film, is this one montage led by uh, dialogue. Okay, um, because every single scene in that film. The, the dialogue dictates the rhythm of the scene, but the dialogue is put forth to us as, as spectators in a really montage-like way because we have characters overlapping each other all the time. Um, not only does that make it natural from a performance point of view, but it is very montage-like. There's a lot of interruption. There's a lot of you know, different yeah. scenes obviously being intercut very, very well. Um, but even when those scenes are intercut, Sorkin makes sure that the line in one scene still relates to the line in the next cut. Um, yeah. So, and I think what this does is it, it montage to me is quite often or not about exposition. It's it's quite a cheap, not cheap. It's quite a quick and effective way of of of, of finding exposition in a film. Sure. If you haven't got like twenty minutes to spend on a couple of scenes, throw a montage in there, and the audience gets it. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think the social network does that for the whole film because there's so much exposition in biopics. There has to be because it's basically like reading the Wikipedia page of Mark Zuckerberg. Especially when it's a niche nature. They're not going to explain how you code a website. Or, exactly. Know, yeah. Little, but they're not going to go into the details of it, are they? Or it's just going to be boring. Yeah. So this exposition gets demonstrated without it coming across as exposition, having yeah. all these multiple montage like lines of dialogue interrupting each other we have to pay attention to all of the different lines of thought going into a scene at once yeah um and it to me not only you know it reminds us of the nature like moments in passing and and time itself speech and voices are structured around time you know beats mores syllables Mm. um and i think sorkin really manipulates time with dialogue in a very similar way to montages and this is really clear in the opening scene of the social network. If anyone, if any of our listeners have have watched it recently, there are seven pages to that opening scene, and it's all dialogue. And quite a lot of the time, I feel inclined to go back because I've missed a line because there's so many interruptions. Yeah. Is is that a bit when he's running through the campus? No. It, yeah. Well, just before that, when he's in the right. he's in the bar with his girlfriend, and he's and she breaks up with him because all he can right, talk right. about is final clubs. Uh, and all she can talk about is guys who row crew for the rowing yeah. team. Yeah. Um, and so even if you don't follow every single beat of these very long dialogue scenes all the way through the social network, the way they're presented in this montage-like way means that we still get, by the end of the scene, we still get the, like, the cleanest image of what is going on in terms of character development. Yeah. Like by the end of that scene, the very first scene where, he, where his girlfriend breaks up with him, I barely heard what they were saying all the way through the scene because the bar is loud and they keep talking over each other. And yet by the end of the scene, I get such a clear image of who Mark Zuckerberg is. Yeah. Uh, you know, yeah. he's, he's, uh, he's introverted. He's, a- he's got anxiety. He's, he just wants to get into a final club because he thinks that's going to elevate his status. He doesn't care yeah. about his girlfriend. So you get all those things because Sorkin treats dialogue as like a melody and he intercuts it like a montage so i would argue the whole film is like that right until the very end you could argue that every film is like that's that. Quite the, yeah that's quite 
Yeah. So every film is just. <laughs> but I, I think I, that logic. I think you've got I, to draw the line somewhere. <laughs> I think I think the social net, the social network is a special case because it, because it, because of its biopic nature and because of the amount of exposition needed for a biopic. Yeah. You could say, yeah, well, every film is just a montage because every film is like that, but but not every film is like The Social Network. I can't think of the last time I watched a film that was like The Social Network where it manipulated dialogue so much to the point where I didn't even need to hear what they were saying to to get the picture of the, yeah. the you know the characterization and, and where the scene mm. was going. Um, Sorkin's so, an interesting one as well because you're talking about it being naturalistic. He's, he's one of those writers that like straddles the line between it's naturalistic, but it's also so unnatural the way the characters talk. You know, mm. it's like um, when people talk about Tarantino dialogue. Like, I, was saying, I was just about to say Tarantino. Yeah, Tarantino but, yeah. is another one. Like everyone says, oh, it's so realistic. And it's like, well, it isn't. No, yeah. it's, 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 it's unrealistic, but yeah, it is yeah. realistic. Yeah. And it's weird. Yeah. I it's wonder nice. if um, Sorkin was inspired a bit by some of Tarantino's scripts because, you know, if you think about the bar scene at the start of the social network, if I think of a scene that's similar to that in terms of Tarantino, I immediately think of the cafe from Pulp Fiction. Yeah. Yeah. You know, they're yeah, just yeah. interrupting each other and you don't really need to know what they're saying, but you know they're gonna rob that place. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. So I, yeah, I think dialogue can definitely be used as as a in, in montage terms, you know. That is a that is a very interesting case and I can't uh, let's see what Charles Thank you, Judge. Thought. Thank you. Some cryptocurrency. So I've definitely put the same amount of research into this as Joe. <laughs> uh, uh, so the film is Citizen Kane. Okay, right. So you're all about to fall asleep. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you, you you can't beat Citizen Kane, it's the best film ever. It's not, but <laughs> it says it is. Um, uh, it's I'm, Primarily the bit when have you both seen it? I have not no. actually seen Citizen Kane. Oh wow! Well. You felt fallen asleep five times trying to watch it. <laughs> <laughs> explain, explain the uh, the montage sequence then. What, so what? It's this Charles Foster Kane, he's like yeah. a, a newspaper magnate, yeah, rich bastard sort of dude. <laughs> um, Charles, uh, uh, yeah, carry on. I can't think of the name. And, it, <laughs> <laughs> and it, it's like. This montage is showing the deterioration of his relationship with his wife. Yeah. And it's all done from like the sitting at like a table or like having dinner at a table. Uh, yeah. Yeah. And like you see the other like age as they go through it, but it's just like really quick, like uh, examples of why and how their relationship deteriorates. So one of them is to do with like uh, his wife is. Uh, his uncle's his president and Kane is running against him and stuff like that and for counsellor and stuff like that but I, cause I like it because it it basically shows you the film the whole film in short so it's like yeah. the whole film's about his rise to like money and power yeah. and, and how he uh, eventually well he doesn't lose it all but he he sort of does, he loses his relationship and, and yeah. you know he just ends up lonely and in this massive house with full of stuff that doesn't matter, like trinkets. empty trinkets. That's yeah. it. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. You, know, you, you describing that has made me think. I want to see someone compare it to the start of Up now, mm-hmm. just because it's a husband and wife montage of this. Yeah, that's true. I just think that'd be an interesting comparison. I should have gone with Up instead of the social network. <laughs> <laughs> it's too late now. You've locked in your answer. Ah, uh, sorry. <laughs> Sorry, Charlie. Yeah. Anyway. No, sorry. Right. So I yeah. think it's just yeah. a really good example of um, it shows the whole film in short. You've got the whole yeah. He gets his wife and they're happy, and that's like the peak of he... um, the uh, whole uh, thing. And then he deteriorates. I can't remember, I can't remember it that well, but is does the is the ta- the table changes? Is it like a bigger table and they're further apart and things and that? Yeah, and then but there's so much trickery in it. It's like right. all like done. All of the staging is. It's done. Yeah. I mean, all the costumes change, and like yeah. he gets darker, and I think she gets lighter in, in their costume. Yeah, um, it's really good. It's, it's a really good montage sequence. So am I going to have to decide right now? Right now, here, ask, right now, ask, right, ask right now, Connor. Or like fucking whatever. <laughs> yeah, maybe I'll uh, maybe I'll get you to 
give one more like short point to uh, to bolster your arguments. So oh, uh, I should have kept go- something for the end. Know, maybe you can just summarize what you've already said. But uh, you go first, Joe. Just, just, just a short, a very short kind of uh, end end argument for the for your... whole films can be montages in the non cliche sense. So go away, Chaz, because I'm not I'm not, I'm not listening to your. Uh, oh well, all films are montages. Then <laughs> <laughs> um, I think. Well, I yeah. Think... So. He can't win because he's saying that all the films are montage. No, I, I'm not saying that all <laughs> films are montage, but but films can be all montage depending on how they've been written and styled. Okay, and, Ch- and Charlie, what's your uh, what's your? So comment? just to put into a a top list of films. Where does Citizen Kane come? And where does Social Network come? No, <laughs> let's leave, leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can we can do it that way if you want. <laughs> there was um, I don't know if it's Tarantino. If that's just because who we were talking about, but there's been some prominent filmmaker who's like, uh, the Social Network is the best film since 2000 that's come out. Someone said that. Someone wow. yeah, it's very good. Yeah, I'll give it that. But hold on, not... I I really want to uh, log in and find your letterbox. I want to see what you've rated Citizen Kane and what you've rated the Social <laughs> Network. Uh, oh I, God! I, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna make my decision now. I'm it. Might be a controversial decision. <laughs> okay. I'm going to award the win to Joe this week. Ah, uh, so, I I like uh, I kind of like the maybe the maybe controversial nature of his argument. But <laughs> I, think he's, I, think he's, I think he's supported it well enough that he's he's won me round, and I, I can see what he's saying about the social yeah. network. Well, I've been so, watching video essays all day, whereas I think Chaz <laughs> might have researched it 20 minutes before the podcast. So. I definitely wasn't hungover all day, no. He just, he, just, <laughs> he, just, he, just, he just woke up in the last 10 minutes of Citizen Kane and like, oh God, I've got to do the podcast. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> it. I was watching it earlier. <laughs> I can't find the social network on your letterbox account, Chaz. Uh, let me find it. Have you even rated it? I've watched it, pre, I watched it pre, pre-letterbox, I think, so mine might have been there. So there we go. So I think this is going to be a um, fe- well. I know this is going to be a feature that we're going to carry on, aren't we? And it's going to be like kind of a leaderboard situation. Yes. Yeah. yeah I think yeah, so. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. One mark to Joe. So if someone, there we if go. someone writes our names down and puts a little one tally. I can't remember Joe. your names to be honest. So yeah, it's a good idea. <laughs> <laughs> um, I gave the social network three. What did you give Citizen Kane? Uh, probably the same. <laughs> <laughs> one. Yeah, I didn't rate it. It was that bad. <laughs> I rest my case. I didn't really think you did to give it two because I think I saw it pop up. Mm. Uh, I give it three. I give it three. Oh, you give it three. I just totally lied on that. But there you go. <laughs> um, well, I think we should play. Um, I I got some feedback last last podcast, and people seem to really like the letterbox rating thing. Yeah. Speaking of your ratings, right. Chaz. So we got um, a little jingle. We can go, Charlie's. Right. I'm I'm not that technologically yeah, savvy yeah. on Twitch yet, so we'll we'll just leave it at some awkward silence, shall we? No, we'll, no, we'll let Charlie we'll sing it now. Uh, once I finish talking, leave a little gap, and then you do your jingle, Charlie. You ready? Okay. Ready? Okay. From now. Da, 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 Charlie's ratings. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, here we go. The, the moment everyone's been waiting for. The best segment on the podcast, arguably. Uh, uh, so we'll start with Psycho, and someone's rated it three point five. Oh, disgusting! 3.5. Disgusting person has done this. Oh, I know who that is. It's me. I think it's Joe too because yeah. I watched yeah. it recently and I gave it four four point five. I can't. Well, how how have you only given that three point five? That is. Do I have to justify myself again like last week? Yeah, hundred percent with Psycho. Yeah, yeah, I it's the best mm, film ever. Well, they killed off the main character in thirty minutes. Yeah. Uh, that's a yeah, joke. That... I'm, I'm... <laughs> oh, right. that's, that's the whole point. <laughs> no, it's. I think I need to watch it again. I rated that a very long time ago. Um, and I think it was at a time when I didn't appreciate old cinema very much. Right. Uh, which And then obviously I did A-level film and things have changed since then. So I think, I'm, I think it deserves a rewatch, definitely on my part. It is an old yeah. rating. 100%. It's really yeah. good. Yeah. yeah, I only watched it the first time just before Halloween, I think. Mm-hmm. What do you think? Incredible, incredible! Like it was, yeah. it's, it's so. I always find it so interesting to watch a film that's very obviously influenced so many films since. 
Yeah, yeah. Especially that one's so inspirational, isn't There's it? There's so many like, just moments that you're like, yeah, like I'm not even just talking about the shower scene because obviously that's the most famous. But oh, yeah. can I I'll tell you a bit of trivia which you might actually know already? Well, it's Go not on. Joe's trivia minute, so no. This <laughs> is Connor's <laughs> trivia minute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Psycho is the first film to show a toilet flushing. Flushing, yeah, yeah, yeah. How really? mad's that? He is mad, isn't that? Oh, like he, he, he purposely, um, the letter that she throws away, he purposely did it with like that configuration of rooms so that he could be the first person to flush the toilet on film. So it's kind of almost poetic for the film, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Based on my rating. <laughs> yeah. All right, okay, have you got so another one for us? Another controversial rating? Um, 2012, someone's rated one. That was absolutely me because I watched it last year. I also might think it is me, but it's one of those kind of guilty pleasure films that I'll I'll watch because I really like the. To be fair, the sequence when Yellowstone erupts in that film is really awesome. <laughs> I think it's a pretty like. It's not like it's not going to win an award, but it's not that bad. It's it's, just... it's, it's okay, so if we're talking science. So Okay, yeah, it is long, but if we're talking <laughs> if we're talking science and geography, it is nowhere near as bad as the day after tomorrow. Oh that no, was... you lost me oh. there. I loved that when I was a kid, but again, <laughs> when I was a kid, I thought it was the best thing ever. I like used to play it with my friends. Cold like, hurricanes, though. It, yeah, it was, really, yeah. It was dark. So <laughs> 2012, but I don't know. Maybe maybe I have a little bit more love for 2012 than Connor. So I'm going to say Connor. Yes, it was Connor. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 I think I had a um, what's the director called? Can you remember? Uh, is it Rob? Not a clue. Well, he's he's he just disaster flex. That's his thing. And is it Mahal's... Robert M? No, something Emmerich. Roland Emmerich. Roland, em- Roland Emmerich. Yeah. I think, yeah. He. Uh, I think he did like White House. That... Oh, I get them all. Oh, I get all those ones. Yeah. Oh, yeah. he he did twenty twelve and the day after tomorrow. Yeah. <laughs> right. So this is he does disaster films. So me and my friend had like a bit of a. A bit of um, a day or two, just watching a load of his films, and they were just like these. So they're so bad, but they're entertaining. (laughs) At least he's improving slowly (laughs) over the decade. I mean, (laughs) in 2012, at least we'll have to see. He did do the Independence Day films as well, didn't he? I mean, those are probably his best films, aren't they? Yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. The first one is is classic. Again, not going to win any awards, but. You know, I'll, I'll give Sometimes it three stars like, just for Jeff Goldblum alone. It, it won our hearts, and that's all that matters. Yeah, that is it. <laughs> the show rating is all that matters. Exactly. All right, have you got it's another cool. one for us? We we'll did one more, shall we? Yeah. Um, sausage party. Someone gave it four. Sausage Ooh. party. Yeah. Four. I don't, I don't yeah. want to. Re- don't want that, to that can't be me. <laughs> <laughs> I, think it, I think it is because I haven't seen that film. I would not have given that four. That's mad. <laughs> you must have been in an altered state when you. Maybe I watched it really drunk. I thought it was the best thing ever. I need to. That's amazing. I love that. I love that you found sausage that sausage party. No, oh, it was dear. me. It was, was it me. You? Right, it was me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, Chaz, <laughs> I'm not far behind you. I'm three and a half stars. I t- I think it's a really good film. <laughs> I think it's like it's pretty deep. It's like it can be like surface level funny, but it's also a bit deep. I mean, it's quality. I don't think it's a quality film. Yeah, all of the stereotypes in it are, what, are just amazing. They're just so bad, they're good. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It's just it's a bit of fun, isn't it? It's a fun yeah. movie, though. Mm-hmm. You'll have to watch it now. We'll, we'll do it for a show one sometime, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to see about that. <laughs> okay, right. so obviously, uh, film of the day today was Your Name. Uh, it was actually... Charlie, IC- it was called Charlie. <laughs> yeah, there we go. Good one. Um, we uh, this actually, I'm quite proud of this film because it was my first suggestion to the program of films. I I, I do believe when I was invited onto the project by by Charlie. Yeah, he asked me. Was, if, yeah, he, he asked me if I could think of any films to do with time and moments in passing, and, and the first thing that came to my mind was was your name. Um, I sorry every time the <laughs> jokes in my head all the time all the time um <laughs> I have watched it many times I've watched it both in the original Japanese audio and I've watched it in its 
quite good, to be honest. Uh, quite good dub version as well. Um, the American voices, I think, were pretty pretty decent. So um, I've seen both versions. I mean, what can That's I say? A... It's a beautiful film. Oh, it's stunning. It looks stunning. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah. I'll give it I know, I know, I know. It should be obvious that we're going to spoil films that we're talking about, but this is probably one of those films where you might, if you, if you're dying to see this film, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't want to tell people to turn off our stream, obviously. <laughs> I, also no, don't want to ruin- I, I would say I there ruin- are, I think there are some wonderful and if heartbreaking twists that you yeah. know you just you just have to see the film without any knowledge uh, or spoilers. But um, even, even the fact that we've put it in a you know, the, the theme we're doing is time, even that yeah. is like, it's mm-hmm. not really a spoiler, but even that I was going into it thinking, right, what's the connection with time? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 A little yeah. bit before, but, um... Well, you know what time it is? It is, it's Joe's trivia time. What can Joe's I say? Joe's trivia time. It's Joe's trivia time. We get time. a jingle for that, Joe. If we need, we need uh, do I have to sing a jingle? You can't yeah. sing a jingle, thank um, you. That's all uh, right um, Can I not do like a, a Hollywood, like, action trailer guy? If you want to. Like Joe's yeah. Trivia Time. There we go. That, that'll do. That's cool. Yeah, that'll do. All right, so. Voice, I can tell that. That's really, really good. Well, that's, some, um, that's, why my, uh, that. that's why my microphone wasn't working at the start. I was actually rehearsing. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Right yeah. at the start of the podcast. Um, yeah. Right, yes. So, your name. Um, <laughs> the comet disaster in the film. Spoiler yeah. alert. Sorry. <laughs> is inspired. Oh well, yeah. Um, <laughs> obviously, uh, if you didn't know, it's kind of obvious when I say it. it. It was inspired by the Great Eastern Earthquake of Japan in 2011. Uh, oh, obviously, right. sadly, claimed the lives of a lot of people. Uh, but the director, in in in, in the wake of all of the, the the disaster and the carnage of the tsunami and earthquake in Japan, he he kind of imagined this beautiful story that came out of it. Which you know, it's it's really really lovely to think something yeah. beautiful if yeah. only a film can come out of such um such horror so yeah the uh the the comet disaster 100 percent inspired by the the earthquake of japan um even down to the detail when they when they're looking for looking through all the names of the dead um in the style of the book that they go through uh, yeah. even like the black book uh it's exactly the same as the one of the real people the twenty thousand mm-hmm. or so uh, who died in in um in Japan in 2011? So yeah, um, I suppose it might be the director's way of honouring it, or um, yeah. just sending out love and and prayers to families who have lost people in that. But I thought that was a really nice, touching bit of trivia yeah. that I read. Um, when I was watching it, I was like, oh, is this like based on something? Mm. To be fair, because yeah. it's quite like it's quite as you said, detailed the way. It, yeah, the it town isn't real. Them. I know the town isn't real, right. but it is it is sort of loosely based on a few different towns that the director knows about or maybe grew up in. I'm, I'm not too sure. Right, right, right. Um, but just a side note, um, I know you said you've watched both versions show, mm. like the dub and the, the mm-hmm. original uh, Japanese. Which one did you watch, Connor? Uh, not, yeah, we, me and Joe talked about this actually the other day. Normally I would watch um, subtitles just first time just because I want you know the original um, mm. the original performances, but I was watching it with my girlfriend and I watched um, dubbed just because I think I wanted to be able to sort of talk about the film while I was watching it. Like I wanted mm. us to be able to talk about it. Yeah. Right. I, find it, I find it hard to read and talk and listen to someone talk as well at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Dub, but yeah, the performances were great. It wasn't it didn't I kind of didn't feel like I was watching a dub because it was very well done. The performances mm-hmm. were great. Yeah. What 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 did you watch, Charlie? It's just the original like Japanese one. Yeah. I tried like it's fine. I I I didn't um I t- I didn't really get the nuance of the performance on it obviously because I can't understand it or whatever. Mm-hmm. But I think it's just harder to fully get the especially because it's all um voice as well, isn't it? Voice acting. Yeah. So actual, yeah. Like. It's just harder to get the performance, but it's, it's I think like... there's um there's a few jokes. Uh, it's a bit of trivia, just off the top of my head, actually. Um, there's a few jokes in the film that only work if you watch the Japanese version. Right. Uh, so the moment where Mitsuha is in, um, what's the boy called again? Completely gone out of my head. Uh, um. Oh, what's his name? Ah, uh, mm, 
Yeah, the lad. Yeah. Yeah. The, 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 for the first day that she wakes up, uh, Taki, isn't it? There we go. Uh, uh, the Taki, first, the yeah, first yeah. day that she wakes up in Taki's body, and Taki's uh, she in Taki's body is late for school, and Taki's uh, guy mates are like saying why he's so weird today, mm. uh, and there's like a weird exchange in the dub version where he kind of makes he kind of slips up and makes like a joke about being a girl, right? And it, in the dub, it comes across as a little bit awkward. Um, because he's just making a joke about being a girl. Uh, oh. But if you go and watch the original version, it's because in the Japanese language, there are different pronouns, whether you are male or female. Uh, um, right, yeah, yeah. So uh, the neutral way of saying I is Watashi. Uh, whereas if you're a guy, you would say something like Boku. or um, And if you're a girl, you'd say like Ware. Oh, and, really and, right. and basically Mitsuha makes the mistake of using the feminine pronoun in Taki's body. So that's why his guy, her guy, his guy mates are like, uh, until he gets it right. Right. Um, so there's a few jokes like that that, based on the Japanese grammar, don't work in the dub that well. So they had to improvise and they come across as a little bit, little bit um, cheesy. Yeah. So that's the only thing that I would say that the original version has over the dub. But other than that, I think the dub is fantastic. Yeah. I'd say um, the... Um... The, obviously, the, the main story is like obviously very interesting, uh, but just I like really like there's that little I don't even know if it's a side plot, but with um, uh, her mates, the ones that, on the bike at the beginning when they, mm-hmm. um, I don't know what the names are. Uh, when, um, yeah, in the dub he's called Kyle, but I can't remember his original. But we'll go with Kyle. <laughs> yeah, the, but yeah. Uh, her mates, the, I, I really like that little uh, sideline of the story. Yeah. yeah. I was quite invested in it, and when like the <laughs> they end up get getting old. married at the end, <laughs> yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's good. Um, all right, next bit of trivia. Uh, this is quite a funny one. The kuchikami sake that they drink, oh uh, yeah, yeah, quite literally means in Japanese mouth chewed sake. Oh, uh, so lovely. it is appropriately gross for the storyline. So no wonder Mitsu has a go at uh, Taki on top of the hill saying you're a pervert for drinking my. <laughs> <laughs> My mouth chewed sake. Um, like uh, and would another, I think I would. Uh, I yeah, if it was my own spit, yeah. <laughs> just, I, <laughs> fair enough. Yeah. Were well, you gonna uh, say you drink someone else's? Oh uh, yeah, I'd give it a go. <laughs> you drink anything. Yeah. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Going on, you're mad. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> um, last bit of trivia for for your name, the the meteor in the film. I actually didn't know this. I found this out today. The meteor in the film is named Tiamat, after the ancient Mesopotamian goddess of the ocean that represents uh, three different things. Uh, Female beauty, uh, creation, and primordial chaos. And I just wondered if you wanted to talk about that because I I can see, I think the female beauty, I can see that quite clearly in the film. Yeah. um, With like the body swapping and everything because... um, Taki, even though he's a little bit perverted, but he enjoys being in Mitsuha's body <laughs> more than bit, yeah. yeah, more than she enjoys being in Taki's body. She gets very scared that of what he's got between his legs. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. And and I, I guess I guess I could see the primordial chaos because it's not the first time that a comet has struck the the uh, the village, the town, mm. because the whole lake is is an ancient comet uh, site. Yeah, it's really cool, like. If yeah, that, somewhere, somewhere like that actually exists. That's really mm-hmm. cool. Um, right. But I, I just didn't. I can't really. I'm not sure about the creation one. I didn't know where they, where I can make that connection. I was wondering if you guys had any ideas. Mm. I mean, a lot of the plot. Well, the plot's kind of about like creating another timeline, isn't it? Where the history is kind of altered. Mm-hmm. Kind of maybe that's a creation thing. Oh yeah, they're creating their like. New timelines, aren't they? Essentially, yeah, their own, their own destiny, I suppose. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, I'm probably the loosest of the links of the three, the mm-hmm. three things that the Mesopotamian god. Uh, yeah, but, um, we are losing I'm you a little bit there, sure Connor. What else creation-wise, yeah, just losing you a bit there on the on the audio on the Wi-Fi quality there. Um, another little bit of trivia actually for you, Chaz, just while Connor yeah. gets his Wi-Fi sorted out. Um. J.J. Abrams is planning on releasing this film as an American adaptation. Oh, right. Yeah. And I think 
uh, and they're, they're planning on making it more loads about, of lens um, flares in it. Yeah, well, I mean, it's got loads of lens flares <laughs> in it anyway. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Which, that's know. true. Yeah, uh, and I'm kind of excited, but I'm also obviously there's always the cliche of well, anime never really gets translated into American film very well. It's like that. Um, uh, it's, it's yeah. Seven Samurai. Yeah. What's this? Um. Seven is it? Seven Samurai. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. 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 That got, yeah. yeah. Um, that got adapted really early in in Hollywood history, mm. and then they did it. Is that the cowboy one? Did they do a cowboy one or oh, something like that? Right, it's the seven and things like that. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah. Which is the set, obviously like ripping it off, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, the current plan as a, as its own. Sorry, go. No, that's okay. Uh, the current plan for adapting your name um, is they want to make it more about Native American history. Okay. So I think that, the plan I mean, that is. Could be interesting. I, I think so too. I think I think I was quite scared at first because the whole like red ribbon thing doesn't work well in Western um, uh, like philosophy mm. uh, because obviously the red ribbon is really based on the Eastern philosophy, the because it's it's Japanese mythology and all that stuff. Um, but I think if it's Native American, then I think that'll work better. Yeah, yeah. So I'm quite excited to see how that will work because with Native American mythology, there's quite a lot of fate and destiny centered stuff. So I'm excited yeah, yeah. for that, definitely. I think adaptations definitely work when they're uh, mm. not just trying to do a one to one adaptation with different well, characters. Mm-hmm. It's like um, uh, Heart of Darkness and Apocalypse Now. Yeah, like, exactly. That works yeah. so well because it's it's not actually, you're not just. Carbon copying it, as you say, mm-hmm. you just yeah. you're um, putting it in a, in a, in the writer's own context. Yeah, usually well, I, works better because they they've got a deeper understanding of yeah where yeah. That, that comes from. Then mm-hmm. I'd say uh, uh, my my bit of trivia for the film is that I learned the word perigee from it. Mm-hmm. Nice. In the, uh, I think based on the film and the context, it's where the where the comet was at like its apex of its uh, of flight. They called that ah perigee, yes that yes one? yeah yeah. yeah. The comet is, so that, is beautiful. That's, my favorite bit yeah. is when he, um, Taki is standing on top of his apartment building and you just see it like scattered across the sky above yeah. Tokyo. I, There's some really, really nice shots in yeah. it. Yeah, I actually, I yeah. don't know this fact, but I'd be really interested to know how long it took them to draw the film. Yeah. Um, because yeah, yeah. I, I just, I can't imagine how many artists like painstakingly did every frame of that film. Just uh, like some of the wide shots when it was like looking out on the city. Or even mm. over the hills, mm-hmm. and you saw like cars move, yeah. but they were like so far in the background. It's like mm-hmm. that level of detail I've not really seen in an anime yeah. before. Yeah, and I think that's why I'm really excited to have this in 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 the film festival because it's the only anime that we've got. Uh, we will yeah. be going back to to normal film, and I just don't think it gets anime itself doesn't get enough artistic appreciation because I know it comes with a lot of bad reputation like if you if you like anime you're a certain type of person or you, uh, you're, yeah exactly um, uh, and personally i'm not a massive fan of anime but your name is one of my favorite films and to me i just yeah. don't think of it as anime i just i just really appreciate the artistic merit that you know uh, of the yeah. film so your name has definitely opened me up to want to watch a lot more anime films because other than studio ghibli i haven't seen that many mm-hmm. to be honest well, the, the same um, director has just released a new film. It came out on DVD not so long ago. Uh, it's called Weathering With You. I haven't watched okay. it yet, but I'm, I no, really nice. want to. So if you want to the, check that out, do so. The classic anime one is um, Spirited Away, isn't it? Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah I've, not, I've not seen that, but I need to need to watch it. Strange film. Is it? Yeah, well, very strange. Yeah. It, yeah. It, it, some of these films are good to watch as well because they don't follow a similar kind of structure to a lot of Western films. Mm-hmm. So they're quite... Yeah. Sometimes it can be jarring, but you, you kind of just have to, yeah, as much as you can, get rid of preconceptions of what to expect from like a story structure from these films, and just kind of go into it. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah. I think that's where I like not struggled, but I was like, oh, this is like messing with my head a bit. Yeah, when, yeah. When yeah. you get that, like, <laughs> that would be like video game sort of mm. TV introduction to it, and you're like, oh, what, what the hell's going on here, like. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's just a completely different style of filmmaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. really. And 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 speaking of, obviously, this week we had Breathless as well. Oh yeah. Uh, which was uh, part of the French New Wave of cinema. 
back the in the fifties. There we go. Back in the fifties and sixties. Oh, um, Sacre bleu. Do, do we want to talk <laughs> we, about we, that for a bit? Yeah, that's yeah, uh, just, uh, just one thing about uh, your name. Yeah, go for it. You know, um, your name. Uh, so the one thing about Connor. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, um, <laughs> at, at the very beginning, they have like that sound system that plays in at the end as well, right? Mm, yeah, yeah. How, how weird is that to have it in your house? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, is, is that is that legit? What happens in? Um, I I will have to Japan? I would have to Google that. I think. Yeah. Is that, if that is if that's true, that is mental. Yeah. <laughs> that is mental. I think it might be true in smaller towns, perhaps. Right, right. Just because I could probably see it as a lasting effect of the Second World War. Yeah, yeah. like uh, like a le- leftover from air raids. Yeah, from. that's what I'm thinking. Yeah. Um, I don't see it obviously being in your apartment in the middle of Tokyo. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, this massive speaker blaring out like yeah. Big Brother on 1984 or something. <laughs> exactly. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do another smooth segue now. Speaking of the war, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I know a lot about the French New Wave. I hadn't seen any of the French New Wave films before, but really? wow, I knew that they were mainly as a, yeah, <laughs> they were mainly as a result of in 1946 there was an agreement made between America and France. To wipe to wipe out France's war debts. Wow, Connor's really Connor's really the... stealing my trivia spotlight tonight. Isn't oh, sorry, I, <laughs> yeah. I didn't realize. Um, <laughs> and um, they showed all the American films, didn't they? Mm. Yeah, and pa- yeah, apparently that meant and they could import American films a lot more because they used to have kind of not like a, a rule as in citizens weren't allowed to see them, but a rule as in they would only pay for a certain amount and things. But France so, is really like particular about their cinema. They're like, yeah, our yeah. cinema is art, <clears> and <throat> everything else is trash. Yeah, so so France was kind of inundated with this, with all these classic American films, you know, mm-hmm. John Ford and <clears throat> and Hitchhock, Hitchhock, Hitchcock, 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 yeah, <laughs> <laughs> Albert Hitch, Albert Hitchcock, <laughs> and um, and so the the Young Turks, um, of 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 which I can only name two right now, Francois Francois Truffaut and um. Jean Luc Godard. Jean Luc Godard. Yeah. Um, Agnes Varda. Agnes Varda. Yeah. So yeah. they they just said right stuff all this American ideology that we're having rammed down our throats. Let's rip up the rule book and but, sorry, make our own I don't. Terms. Did they say that? That's my argument. I don't yeah, think they did. No, like Come on. Just, let's let's get to it. Let's get to it. <laughs> I I just think they like. I I really like the French New Wave. I think it's mint. But mm, yeah. I think they're just. They're kidding themselves if they think they created a new movement of film when oh. you are so clearly um, pastiching American cinema. I think that's, you just you, you, yeah. yeah. Go on. Sorry. No, sorry. I was I wanted to agree with that. Like one of my notes I wrote down was like, "Is subverting an identity or ideology just doing a complete subversion of it? Is that an identity in itself, or is that just is that just yeah. a critique? Of that? Like, I don't, not." Really identity in itself do you know what i mean yeah i don't i don't think you can i think there's an element of it where like i agree that ripping up the rule book and then doing it all again was um very much their thing but i still the way the story is like written and presented yeah. in, in certain respects it's, i can't i don't think you can call that its own identity so what charlie's trying to say is it's no dogma 95 like it's then, not... well, that's the same thing, right? That, 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 Do you think so? Think, well, I think that the story is very um, basic and, mm. and um, derivative. I, feel like the... I suppose because existentialism was so extreme, you know, back in the the twenties and thirties, yeah, both in theatre and film, it it was so hard then to come along and create something as anarchistic and groundbreaking as as that wave of existentialism and expressionism that just sweeps over europe and uh with you know theater and film yeah uh, so yeah i think that so it's like that postmodern thing where nothing is new right mm-hmm. yeah but, so where, where, where'd you go after that it's like you, you mm-hmm. can't go anywhere back to the future <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, hey. <laughs> what a good segue <laughs> um, um yeah did, did you the... guys know that Truffaut wrote the film what, Back to the Future? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's Truffaut's film. <laughs> I, 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 
not, I'm not really that familiar. Well, with speaking that, of uh, Spielberg and Truffaut, uh, Truffaut is actually in uh, one of Spielberg's films. He's in uh, Close Encounters of the Third Kind. He is oh, the nice, French. He? Yeah, he's the French diplomat who can't That's speak cool. a word of English. Uh, who gets yeah. um, helicoptered into the the alien testing site, uh, and he's in it for nice. like a good half an hour, forty five minutes. That's for me. Yeah. So yeah, there is a connection. <laughs> There's, um, you know, in uh, Brooklyn Nine Nine, mm. uh, Terry always goes on about uh, Breathless, and he's like, he's at that party with uh, when when Amy and Jake go upstairs and try uh-huh. and look for shit in the Holt's house, um, and he's talking to all these intellectuals, and he's like, it's Truffaut's film, he wrote it, and they're like, oh no, he didn't, and all this stuff, and then he like runs off, and he's like, it's Truffaut's film. That's, that's really <laughs> Terry's, Terry, like, Terry's oh. a learned man. <laughs> yeah, he went every part, so he went parties, Charles. It's true for his film, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Charlie, you obviously know Breathless like the back of your hand. Did you know that Jean Luc Godard is in the film? I didn't. Ah, That's cool. there we go. Towards like the Hitchcock. end of the movie, yeah, exactly. Towards the end of the movie, yeah. he is the bystander wearing the sunglasses and reading the paper. He recognizes oh, Michelle and cool. runs off to tell the police. Yeah, there we go. That's cool. And See, uh, that, that, that's a pastiche again. Like it's just yeah, I like yeah. it. It's, there's so many layers to that film. Like mm-hmm. it's. I think it's probably impossible to know all the references. I feel like uh, maybe the maybe the biggest legacy that um, the new wave had was obviously the auteur, the the idea of the auteur. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And like, I don't know what brought this conversation up, but in, at some point we were talking about like, well, I was saying that I don't really like the emphasis on the director being the the author of films. Oh yeah. yeah. I know in some cases the, the case could be argued that they are, but. I just feel it's so, it's just ignoring so many people's hard work. That yeah, piss film. off Christopher Nolan. <laughs> <laughs> I, it's, you know, it's, it's Christopher Nolan and not some of his cinematographers. And, well, that's it. Know. Like It's such a collaborative yeah. medium, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. You can't just, uh, that's why it's true for his film. He's, <laughs> he's the writer. Well, that's but why I so, said, you know, it's no Dogma 95, is it? It's, it's, yeah, yeah. That was... Have you watched any Dogma 95? Uh, come on. If I have, I cannot remember what films I've watched. I remember learning about... Uh, They're yeah, very obscure. Like, very. Festing. That's um, the best. Festing, yeah. That's a very good film. Um, and my, my, my last piece of trivia for Breathless is uh, Kurosawa considered this his favourite film. Wow. I know. That's, Kurosawa. That's, that's really interesting based on his films. Yeah. What his films are. When you, I know. Because you think... Kurosawa was like, you know, written perfectly rhythmic films. And, mm-hmm. and then Breathless is like, somebody's having a stroke while acting or something. <laughs> He's like, the editing is so horrible in this film. It is my favorite. I love it. <laughs> what I else did we like, have? Oh, sorry. It's, it's so, a, a, about the editing in Breathless, it's like so bad that it's like poetic in a different way. Mm-hmm. It's, that's pure chaotic energy, isn't it? Much it's like uh, my argument. For why the social media is is uh, the social media the social network is is one long montage, Chaz. Oh, we, yeah. we, we, we don't we, we won't look at that though. Yeah, we'll one, well, one nil. Just it, saying. Just ignore that. <laughs> I won. No, there's no recounts. <laughs> yeah, recount. <laughs> Stop the account. So what about um, what about should we should we talk about Dunkirk and Back to the Future as well? Yeah. What do we? Okay. I do don't we... have a lot to talk about with Dunkirk. I mean, I, I, I think my, my opinions on Nolan and Dunkirk were made a little bit clear at the end of the last podcast <laughs> uh, when we were talking a lot about Interstellar. Um, Back to the Future, however, I'm more interested to talk about that because of you guys. Charlie, it was your first time watching the film. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, what did you think? Because I've seen it so many times, like, as a kid, and it, I just love it. But to it's watch quality. it for the first time at the age of 23, you know. <laughs> it's really good. I like I you know when you get, films get hyped up and you're like mm-hmm. oh is, is it gonna yeah. be that good and it's just like i've like, already heard all like mm-hmm. the best bits about it and all this but no it was like really good i enjoyed it there's a really good deep fake out there of robert danny jr and tom holland they've been deep faked as as doc brown and and, and marty oh, nice. and it's it's scarily accurate like if they ever did wanted to do a reboot or something that's that'd be perfect but um the this, I think the thing that I can't really, well, I don't really enjoy about Back to the Future anymore is the special effects have not aged well at all. Especially when you consider yeah. things like Star Wars came out 
<clears throat> around the same time. Yeah. The makeup, yeah, the makeup is weird. The, <laughs> the the old people makeup and the young, it's it's very. I can't I can't watch it for too long. Yeah. <laughs> right. Just, um, um, I noticed a load of references that I just didn't know were from that film. Mm-hmm, yeah. It's like um, Coldplay sampled a bit of it, and it's like really obviously Rick and Morty. Um, yeah, there's loads of like little things, and I was like, "All oh, right, that's where that's from." And it's like, it's really cool. Mm-hmm. Actually, people, place a lot of people say how original Rick and Morty is, and I'm like, "You do know the whole concept is just, just is just derivative." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I first watched Back to the Future, the the thing that was not meant to be funny but made me laugh was the amount of times they play Huey Lewis in the news. Like, don't they play the song yeah. like twice, three times in the film or something? Yeah. It's just, it's just really <laughs> mad. So has anyone someone... um uh, has anyone seen American Psycho? Yes, I was yeah, gonna yeah, say yeah, what, yeah, yeah, like um he Pat is it Patrick Bateman? Yeah, there's yeah, he yeah, would yeah. have a field day watching Back to the Future. <laughs> <laughs> he would love it. We'll get him on. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll get him on. We'll get Christian Bale on the podcast. We're on the celebrity each week. You know, just, it just struck me as so funny when I first watched it. And the one of my only um, criticisms of it is it has a trope which I really can't stand, and it's the reveal of wearing a bulletproof vest so that you're actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> which, which, I'm wondering that wouldn't have invented the cliche, would it? There I don't know. I feel, like, before. I feel like it might be quite right, but. I think, possible it's kind of popularized it at least maybe yeah it's a good film that, i mean it I, also I love, does sorry god i was just gonna say i do love robert zemeckis's work like forrest gump's one of my favorite films i know it's kind of a lot of people don't like the cheesiness of it but mm-hmm. i didn't know he did that that's meant forrest gump is wonderful in terms of filmmaking and like the effects in that obviously it's later than back to the future but the effects in that of the you know the historic films that they've put um uh, mm-hmm. put forrest gump in all the presidents and things, I just think yeah, yeah, good, good filmmaking. Yeah, really for good. for nineteen for the nineteen nineties, the the CGI in Forrest Gump is really good. The way they yeah. superimposed him into all of those real life things, yeah. it's like deep fake level, isn't it? It's really yeah, good. it is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, it really is. John Lennon one's good in that. I, I appreciate yeah. that one. I've got some trivia for Back to the Future for you, Chaz. You might like this one. Um, okay. In the shot of the clock tower in nineteen eighty five, after Doc Brown has sent Marty into the future. Um, with that flying by helicopter thing, you can clearly see uh, there's a piece of the ledge under the clock dial broken off because it was broken off by Doc Brown in 1955. Oh, that's, that's cool. cool. Yeah, I like that. Attention to detail. Well, like, uh, there's so many, like, you know, that first shot when he goes through the town, mm-hmm. um, and then you come back to it. Obviously, he does it pretty much the same later mm-hmm. on. Well, back in time, mm-hmm. just the detail is really good. Like, it's, it's great, isn't it? They must have had an absolute like field day writing it and being like, "Oh, well, we can reference this and then that." And it's, yeah, there's a very cool. funny um, scene in The Big Bang Theory where they disprove all of the science in Back to the Future. If you get a chance to watch it or listen to it, it's very funny. And basically, oh. they they uh, they conclude that Back to the Future is a bunch of bullshit <laughs> <laughs> in terms of in terms of real science. If yeah. time travel were for real. I know uh, me and my friend went through a year of quoting, I'm late for school, just whenever we were late for anything, because that line <laughs> is just so funny to me at the start of the film, and the music starts blasting as well. <laughs> it's, really it's just so funny. The, the start of it really reminded me of um, like Ferris, Bu- Ferris Bueller's Day Off. Yeah, mm-hmm. I can see that. Like, just that whole like 80s vibe. I Yeah, it was good. So, um, with this week, we've had a lot of sci-fi. Uh, and I know that tomorrow we are moving on to a different kind of film. Yeah. So for tomorrow's film, we've got documentary. So um, listeners out there, we are doing Stories We Tell. It's a 2012 Canadian documentary film. Uh, so I've actually never seen this, so I'm looking forward to watching it. Uh, and quite exciting, we are going to be trying something different tomorrow. So we will be watching the film live on a platform called cast it's kind of like a netflix party type vibe uh, and we're gonna send out a link and, and viewers out there can join in and watch the film with us and yeah. we'll be talking about it as as the film is on not too much we don't want to spoil things but uh 
Unfortunately, we can't stream it over Twitch because of, of course, yeah, we can't because uh, of copyright. Yes. We won't be able to do it on Twitch, but we will be posting and sending out news of how to join in uh, on our cast link, and that'll be tomorrow. So look out for that on our Twitter and our Instagram. Before we uh, sort of wrap things up, I just wanted to read out a comment uh, from Gwon said the girl who leapt through time is another good anime film about time. I haven't seen that. So I've never seen that. Yeah. It maybe maybe we'll have to do another time festival. Yeah, or an anim- if we do an animation festival, we could put that in there. That's yeah, yeah that's that's a very yeah. good thing. Well, thanks for joining in on our podcast. Um, if well, you're, I'm <laughs> um, if you're joining us for the first time, we are hosting a virtual film festival all the way through December. If you missed our first podcast, um, we have had some technical difficulties, and we're currently trying to get that onto our channel, but. Uh, if you do want to go back and listen to this one, it will be posted to our channel after Hopefully. the podcast. Hopefully. <laughs> Fingers crossed this time. <laughs> um, if you're joining us from our social media platforms, thanks for following us and supporting us over the past week. We we you know we can't do this without your support. Uh, and if you're joining us from the link tree, please go and check out our social media pages. Stay up to date with the festival. We've also got a really kick-ass website as well with the full schedule on there and a few bios about who we are. Uh, of course, you can click on the show link, uh, the show logo on the Twitch stream. That'll take you to the link tree. Uh, and also, if you want to check out our letterbox accounts, you can follow those at the handles underneath the logo, uh, just and to see what kind uh, of films you're up to. Invest yep. in Nolan Corn. Yeah, but, <laughs> of <No>. course. <laughs> All right. <laughs> this has been a pleasure, guys, and I uh, look forward to seeing some people to watch the stories we tell tomorrow. Uh, and then if not, great. we'll look forward to our next podcast. Which oh, it's will be... 6 o'clock, isn't it, tomorrow? Yeah, 6 o'clock Just tomorrow night. Uh, and our next uh, live podcast will actually be uh, a fun drinking game. So do stay tuned for news on that. We'll be posting about it pretty soon. So, yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks it's been a pleasure. Much. Thank you all for listening. Right. Thank you. Bye-bye. Boom. Boom. Is it, is it- <laughs>